So up to this point, we've only considered one wall and the particle moving in one dimension, but we have this um, pressure relationship for that one dimension. So let's think about expanding this to multiple dimensions. What's that going to look like? Now, there's nothing special about the X direction. That's just the one we picked. Um, so everything we've derived should also work for the, the Y and Z directions. Um, so what we call this, we call this, this is an isotropic, uh, the speed, the velocity is isotropic, meaning direction doesn't matter. That's the definition of this. Meaning that there's nothing special about any of the dimensions that we have. So we could say that the average velocity in the x direction squared, the average of that square, will be the same in the y direction and in the z direction. So these are all going to be equal to each other because none of them are special. Uh, so now these are our velocities, but usually what we want to think about in terms of particles are speeds, right? What's How fast is it moving? Not necessarily caring which direction it goes in. So we can switch this to thinking about speed and if we want it the square of the speed instead of the square of the individual velocity components, well the speed is just, uh, this is a the magnitude of the velocity vector, the overall velocity vector. So if we think about, you know, we have our x, y, z coordinates here, our velocity vector is going to point in some direction the speed is going to be the length of this vector. So that's u. And then we'll have our different components, ux, uy, and uz going back here. So the square of, of the speed is going to be equal to the square of the x component plus the square of the y component plus the square of the z component. This is basically the Pythagorean theorem, just with an extra dimension. OK, and that same formula, if we just take the average of everything, uh, we'll have the same formula. So the average of the square of the velocity is going to be equal to the sum of the averages of the squares of the individual components. All right, so now we've, we've related this back to something that we can measure. But we just said that all of these three are the same. So we can simplify this expression and just say that if we just stick with the x direction, the average of u squared is going to be equal to 3 times ux squared because all of these are equal to each other. Um, that also lets us, we can go the other way around. We can say, okay, well, the equation we have ahead above is in terms of ux squared, the average value of it. So we can say this is equal to one third of the square of the speed, right? The magnitude of the velocity vector. So now we can make uh, the substitution here. Right, we had our equation relating the pressure on that one wall. The pressure will be same on all the walls, um, but we don't add them all together, right? Pressure is, is not an additive property like that. So we can say PV is equal to capital N times M, and now we can substitute our, our new expression for U, uh, average of UX squared, which is one third of, times the average of the speed squared, or we can just you know, rewrite this a little bit nicer like this. Okay, so now we have something that's related to the speed. Now, it's not looking at a particular component, but we're, we're, we're relating it to the speed of the particle. So we have the average of the square of the speed. Now, we've derived a macroscopic quantity, pressure, something we can measure. Uh, also, you know, it's related to these other macroscopic things uh, we can figure out, like number of moles, uh, mass of the, of, of the particle, and the volume. Um, based on the microscopic behavior. This is the power of having a simple model with some you know, basic assumptions we put in. We can then use physical properties, those Newton's laws of motions, to derive the pressure. So that's, that's pretty neat. And now we can start to relate microscopic quantities to macroscopic things. Um, so that's what we'll start looking at the next video. Now that we have this expression, we can use what we know about the ideal gas law to then find something out about the speeds of particles.